While I have frequently seen its summit actively erupting, I have never seen it like this. In fact, the last time Kilauea produced a cycle of strong lava fountaining episodes was all the way back in the 1980s, from 1983 to 1986 where it produced 44 such episodes from the Pu'u'u event. During the last 125 years, such towering lava fountains which frequently reached well above 1,000 feet in height have only been observed four times, making the activity so far a truly once-in-a-generation event. If you don't believe me, you can just ask my friend who runs the Two Pineapples YouTube channel who has watched Hawaiian volcanoes for far longer than I have. Yes, you can view these lava fountains safely at designated areas in Hawaii Volcanoes National Park. With Kilauea now having completed a total of 23 eruptive episodes since December 23 of 2024, this activity now ranks second among post-1900 cyclical activity in terms of the number of episodes it consisted of that involved tall lava fountains. So, why exactly is such unusual activity taking place? Why didn't we see the same thing eruption cycle occur during the prior five years of eruptions? For reference, the first few years of Kilauea's post-2018 caldera collapse summit eruptions were longer and continuous, involving an average lava effusion rate of just under 3 cubic meters per second. And yet, during its Sunday lava fountains, I estimate that during the six hours of lava fountaining that an average of 218.5 cubic meters per second of lava was erupted. While yes, Kilauea's summit has much lengthier pauses in between various episodes, if we take the average rate of lava effusion post-December 23, 2024 when episodic activity began, we would reach a figure of 8 cubic meters per second. In other words, the supply of magma to Kilauea's summit has most definitely increased presumably temporarily compared to the prior few years, which is our first factor in this distinct activity. The second factor goes along with the first being that gas in the magma that pools in Kilauea's magma chamber can congregate in stronger concentrations when there is a larger amount of magma. This means that generally speaking a higher rate of magma input into the system will result in higher lava fountains since it is this same gas that rapidly expands as it rises to the surface, propelling molten rock upwards. Factor number 3 Prior post-2018 eruptions occurred from and thus divided their magma supply between multiple fissure vents, such as seen during its June 2023 eruption. In contrast, episodic lava fountaining has occurred solely from the same two small vents, resulting in rising magma and gas acting more like the back of a narrow rocket engine through the Venturi effect. If you combine all of these factors, and add that three of the north vent's tiny openings have created constricted pathways that naturally funnel erupting lava to the side, you get the observed spectacular lava fountains. Vent constriction You can more easily see this process early on during the lava fountaining phase, with the sheer volume of ejecting molten rock eventually breaking the region between the three vents to create a narrow band where lava would erupt from. These lava fountaining episodes show no signs of stopping anytime soon, with the middle 80% of episodes occurring between 2 and 9 days apart from one another as you can see in this tiltmeter diagram which really hasn't changed much over the past 3 months. The U.S. Geological Survey expects episode number 24 of lava fountaining to begin around June 3, 2025. As a final note, I would like to thank my new YouTube channel member Scott Stewart for supporting my work.